Hey everybody, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil and it's time to talk QI. And this week's viewer recommendation takes us to a very early Sandy Talks Vig episode, her first series, Series N, Episode 5. Now, the order that these are aired isn't necessarily the order that they were filmed in. There's no way to know that for sure. But in any case, it's early in her first series. But we've already seen her very first aired episode, and it seems she hit the ground running. So I, I don't feel like I need to grade her on a curve for an episode like this. Don't know who the guests are, but that rarely seems to matter. They they always seem to do a good job of filling the seats, and uh, people tend to bring their A games when they're on this show, it feels. So I'm excited to jump into it. This is episode five of series N, and it's called Not Nearly. Welcome to QI, where tonight we are turning positively negative in the not, nearly, nearly not, neither and no shows. <laughs> the never knowingly under funny, Giles Brandreth. Oh, it's Giles. The nearly perfect Jimmy Carr. Oh, cool. I'm not sure I've seen Giles and Jimmy together before. Oh, man, we, we got banger cast today. No, 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 no. No. It's, it's Alan Davis! Sweet. Killer lineup. And Victoria goes. You've got the look. No, 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 no. no. I don't know that one, but great. And so to the first question, and it's important, you don't listen uncarefully to this one. Alan, don't you not want some points or not? Do you not want some points? Want some points or not? Or I do you? want some points. I do don't know. Do you not? I <laughs> also don't know whether he does or not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Do, you say, do you want points or not? No, yes, but so it, the answer is. is I, I don't not want points. I'll just tell you now, one answer has a klaxon and one doesn't. <laughs> not has a klaxon, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Sometimes with yes. these really taxing questions, the yes. thing to do is to translate them into another language. Okay. Because that makes it simpler. No, because some languages have double negatives. German language only has about 150,000 words. The yes. French have fewer than 100,000 words, yes. okay? Including Le Weekend. Yes. A thousand times no. Oh, yes. <laughs> have you thought about today? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Answer. Oh, oh. It's not a yes no question. No, that's what I thought. Well, but fundamentally, yes is better than no. I was enjoying Giles's. But, uh... but curiously, the answer would have been different. <laughs> I didn't mean I'd come back to it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the answer in French would have been yes. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, no. But if you translate, what did you originally say? <laughs> is, is, it, is it too early to lose the will to live? <laughs> <laughs> this is her first exposure to Giles. I love it. Did you? Yes. A role model for women everywhere yes. should, in fleshing out the double negative, come out with a statement broadly, yes is better than no. That's not what I'll be telling my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's a positive double negative, like Tom Jones's, it's not unusual, that's fine, okay? Because that, basically, Why is that fine? Well, it never used to be a problem, the double negative. And then in the 18th century, they became obsessed with mathematics, and it's to do with mathematics. Oh, oh do do this in Danish. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I can do it. No, I won't do it. No, please, don't. <laughs> you, do you do that, I think I've had a stroke. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a body being found. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a Scandinavian murder <laughs> mystery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Contortion if you can feel wind on your bridge. <laughs> Trying to think what position you'd have to be in. I, was... I don't know, but I'm going to try and sketch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody know the difference between no and nay? Is it like the French no and see? 
Yeah, you're exactly right. It's to do with the type of question that you get. So there used to be two affirmatives, yes and yay, and two negatives, which were no and nay. And basically, yes and no were responses to questions posed in the negative. So will he not go? The answer is yes, he will, or no, he will not. not Are so. you allowed to say nay without saying sirrah? That's or indeed, right. prefacing it with hey, nonny. No. <laughs> <laughs> docking, docking points uh, from anybody who gets it wrong from now on. Is that clear? <laughs> yes, no, no, yes, but not entirely. Is yes, that no. Yay. 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 Because that was in the positive, so the answer can only be yay or nay. So the answer, in fact, uh, Victoria's entirely right is yay. Yeah. Yay is the equivalent of yes, but nay is not the equivalent of no. That's what we've learned. No. Well, no. Nay. So, yeah. What we've learned is yes. nothing. Ah. But what I can tell you not is nothing. there's really nothing wrong with double negatives. Only arbitrary pedants believe there isn't not. <laughs> I kind of wish David Mitchell was on this episode because he'd be ranting so hard. Why is the person on the right such a loser? Oh, isn't yes. this interesting? He's obviously been in a court martial. You are in the right area. So he's a sort of mm. nearly man. Oh, he's an understudy. I don't he's think we can call them that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sensitivity training, Sandy. This is my Randy Scandy, this guy. Uh, he took part in the 1948 Olympics. His name is Sergeant Getnal Persson. Ah. And he was in the Swedish equestrian team, and they easily won gold. Uh, they were stripped of the medal because the French, who came second, noticed that he was wearing a sergeant's cap. In those days, Olympic equestrianism was open only to officers and gentlemen. It was an amateur sport, mm. and other ranks were considered to be uh, professionals. The Olympics are stupid sometimes. Okay, I would like to see the amateur ethos brought back to sport. Oh, what yes. do you think oh, about no. that? No. The amateur thing no, the, in sport is, I mean, they've ruined it now, haven't they? They've the, ruined no, the Olympics. The, no, the amateur thing was a way to exclude the poor and, and, and beyond that, certain races. It was, about, it was about the wealthy gentlemen competing. Does anybody know what the very first ever substance abuse case in the Olympics dealt with? Cocaine. Sherry. You're very close. Was it yes. absent? Uh, no. I'm oh, sorry, I wasn't answering. I was just hoping someone you would want to answer. <laughs> uh, she was suspended from the American Olympic swimming team in 1936 for drinking too much champagne. No. Now, too much champagne is too much champagne. That's exactly. all relative. Uh, I think it's... I think it would particularly... The second magnum. Performance. This is like Ross Rebliati winning snowboard gold in 2010 while having pot in his system. The first time I went it wasn't a performance-enhancing drug. Binary, so it's always good to back the, the second favourite because often someone slipped the favourite a pie. <laughs> that would probably work on this show. Do you not think? Many of the time I've been slipped to pie. <laughs> what did these guys do when they realised their cocks was too big? That's a presuming. Okay, they're, they're rowers. Big. Yeah. Kind of. Is this the youngest Olympic gold medaller? Also sort of shouts, row, which Shout doesn't stroke. seem necessary yep. stroke, in any other Stroke, sport. stroke, <laughs> stroke. No one in the 100 metres has got a guy on the side going, left, right, left, right. <laughs> This is the Dutch coxed pair from the 1900 Olympics. So what happened was they got through to the final and they had an overweight cox called Hermanus Brockman and they thought it was going to cost them the gold. And then they plucked one from a crowd, this boy. He's between seven and ten years old. Nobody knows his name, but with him coxing, they won the gold and then he vanished back into the crowd. Love it. Yeah, I went and I saw the rowing. It was yeah. amazing. One. Where did you sit? Oh, I had a great seat. <laughs> 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 well, I was in the boat. <laughs> gold winner ever in the Olympics. Hermanus Brockman, he got the gold medal. Oh, and he was disappointed that it wasn't made of chocolate. No. <laughs> I have got three bottles of wine. Passed out a very excellent with cheese. Cheesy and fruity. Oh, uh, fair enough. This one goes down very well, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> So, Victoria, so you know nothing about these wines. I just imagine that you care for mm -hmm. all wines and other sim similar wines. I, I can make that leap of the imagination. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which one would you purchase based on the price? The $6 on one. On those prices? I mean, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> People have wine stoppers. What's the point of that? <laughs> I'm not a wine snob. If I didn't know anything about them, I'd buy the cheapest one. So, if a bottle of the duty says £4 at a bottle, and a bottle is five pounds, you're really paying off for a one pound bottle of wine. But if it's six pounds, you're paying for a two pound bottle of wine, so Ooh. it's therefore twice as good. So even though it's only one pound more. Oh. And I've followed that advice ever since. Was that, was that <laughs> <laughs> and he's buying six pound, pound bottles of wine. Was he outside a shop at the time? Was he, <laughs> <laughs> he was already drunk. <laughs> 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 I 
What do you well, get it for, Jimmy? Second cheapest, always. And then once you've had one bottle, just... But also, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> is there not a psychological... There's only a penny difference, you see. Is there not a psychological... Yeah, but five ninety nine feels like it's supermarket pricing. Subconscious thing that we prefer precise uh, prices to round ones. That seems to be a thing. Oh. It is odd that six pounds one p sounds a lot more than five ninety nine. It sounds about forty. Yes, quid it does, more. doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> is this genuinely wine, or have they filled the bottle with water? Why did you unscrew it and see? This is wine. This is wine. It's mm -hmm. Beaujolais. Have we got any it? glasses? <laughs> <laughs> In restaurants, you should always order the house wine because if yeah. they should. <laughs> it's going to be that kind of episode. You know what? Not terrible. No, yeah, and, and weirdly, yeah. the next subject that I've got coming up is the bacteria in people's mouths. <laughs> <laughs> Cooties. People are more likely to pay nine hundred pounds for a luxury handbag oh, yeah. than eight ninety nine ninety nine because you don't want it to be affordable. That's not the point. I genuinely, I don't understand about handbags. Okay, and I'm. I'm not really a proper girl, as I oh. try to. <laughs> and Jimmy's fine with that. <laughs> Do you carry a man bag? I don't carry a man bag, but I discovered a handbag. I had a Merce for a while, before everything ended up on my phone. So when you are next, Sandy, chatting yes. with Her Majesty and thinking it's going rather well, doing some of your amusing Danish stuff. Um... <laughs> She can't. She can't. Her husband is a Dane. He's he's Greek. A, no, 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 that's just a cover. Okay. <laughs> um, in the meaning of Liff, which is a fabulous book, a Kibblesworth. I've learned about the meaning of Liff. Uh, it's defined as the footling amount of money by which a price is less than a sensible number. Like. Co written by Mr. Lloyd and. Um, oh, oh damn it, I'm blanking on. <laughs> Hitchhikers. Damn it. So Problems, but the pence ain't one. Now, just that's for the younger people. <laughs> <laughs> What's a really unfortunate name to have on the internet? There's a pen island that has a website. Oh. Penis land. Yes. Is that right? Which doesn't yeah. look great. No, I found that once I once Googled big cart horse and my word. For what legitimate reason were you Googling big cart horse? <laughs> I get lonely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a British feminist called Margaret uh, Sandra, and in uh, 1979 she dropped her surname because she went to buy a tumble dryer and she wasn't allowed to buy it unless her husband signed the form. If you don't have a surname on a computer, you can't easily claim benefits or you can't book online or you can't do all sorts of things you can't do. So what does, what do, you know, poor Bono and Cher. What does Cher do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> poor thing. They're down there at the water's edge, bashing their clothes on rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get a washing machine on that. <laughs> the edge is no help. <laughs> <laughs> was a British student called Adam Armstrong, and uh, he had his Ryanair seat accidentally booked in the wrong name. So the airline was going to charge him £220 administration fee to correct this error, changed his name by deed poll, <laughs> and got a new passport for £103. <laughs> There's a lesson there. I have no idea what it is. Interesting. And now for Only if you really don't care about what your name is, I suppose. To invite to a don't-come party. Oh. Yes. A don't come party. It's an actual thing that uh, <laughs> it's used now by charities. Oh, we will not hold this occasion. You don't therefore need to spend money on having your hair done, buying a new frock, hiring a car, yeah. uh, taking part in the raffle, buying Baby a balloon, yeah. uh, getting the drugs behind the um, fountain. Over. Does this come out of people going, I would pay not to go to that event? Yeah. Yes, I uh, would pay not to hear Giles's after dinner speech. I'm uh, not saying. <laughs> <I'm not saying. laughs> no. So a never event is yes. different. It's the official name used by hospital administrators to describe errors that are wholly avoidable. Curiously, these never events do occur. I was hosting the British Funeral Directors Awards recently. <laughs> <laughs> Around the edges of the room, there were uh, coffins, caskets. Were you picking uh, a new home? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Too far? He's old and he'll be dead soon. I'm sorry if I <laughs> I don't think you realize how this is getting to me because this morning, this very morning, I received a letter through the post inviting me to be the new face of the Stanner Stairlift. 
Oh. The worst thing about this is... That's a premium gig for a senior actor. The worst thing about this is my wife said, I think we should consider this. I have then phoned them up. And I said, have you thought of Nigel Havertz? It turned out they had. I was about 17th on the list. <laughs> my problem is that I go upstairs, and I can't remember why I've gone upstairs. Yes. So my idea is this. I attach to the arm of the stair lift an old-fashioned tape recorder. I press the two buttons. I tell myself why I am going upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> These are both improbable pictures of George the First. So what on earth happened here? Oh, he had his wig made into a moustache. <laughs> <laughs> a separate George the First. Yeah, I was about to say. George the First of Britain on the left. Yes. He was German, of course. He was German. In fact, he only spoke German when he first became uh, king. There were 51 candidates to become the next king. Why did they choose George? All of them but, were ahead of him. Because we like a German. Because the others were all Catholics. Ah, of course. It was uh. the... Must have been like an upset on the X Factor. Yes, yes, it's, it's exactly like in. that. Start it? kicking Catholics off the X Factor, that'll stir up the rating. <laughs> 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 we're coming back to the old rules. <laughs> he was Prince William of Denmark and he became uh, King of Greece. Yeah, uh, that's... In... Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> That's where Philip comes from? So, surprisingly, the end of the Greek War of Independence, so 1829. <laughs> uh, Shut him down. Who imagine such a thing? Greece, in chaos. Uh, the Greeks voted 95% of them that they wanted the British prince, Prince Alfred. Oh, uh, but there was a treaty that banned British royals from taking the Greek throne. Uh. So Prince William got it. He got it. With six, six votes. Yes. Oh. Ouch. That's, have a careful look at this and tell me what's not right. Uh, first of all, do we know which coronation it is? Yes. Is that Victoria? So first of all, the Archbishop of Canterbury forced the coronation ring onto the wrong finger. Uh, it caused her severe pain and they couldn't get it off afterwards. Uh, then the Bishop of Bath and Wells accidentally turned over two pages in the service book and he cut out the whole section where they made her queen. <laughs> what? What? She had to come back and do it again. At least they didn't televise that one. Lord Roll uh, became globally famous for tripping over on the steps leading to the throne and uh, rolling all the way down. Oh. She didn't endear herself to, to the public until that moment, and when Lord Roll fell down the stairs, she got up and tried to help his, him. His name is Roll? Now, here's a substance you may be not unfamiliar with, even if you don't think you're not. Bells. The whole episode's given me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> what might you use Nobel's safety powder for? Is that yes. TNT related? Not the original. Dynamite related? Name for dynamite. It is absolutely right. Uh, okay, yeah. Original name for dynamite. Why did you it? want to blow up pretty Japanese girls? Sorry? What? <laughs> I'm going to guess that that's a mock up for amusement purposes. Oh, for today. Oh, yes. it's not the original advertisement. No, no. I don't think suggesting. Oh. Oh. The idea that yeah. someone would be, you know, flicking through What Quarry magazine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. You'd have to have serious cellulite to want to put dynamite yeah. to it. <laughs> they sell embalming fluid. As, 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 as I, I know fluid. that, actually. Well, yeah, we will it from your friends in the funeral business. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what was keeping you looking so fresh. <laughs> so there's a story that uh, there's no Nobel Maths Prize uh, in order to punish all mathematicians uh, because one of them had eloped with his wife. It's not true because... Wasn't married? Never got married. Um, which no, it isn't true. I mean, there's no Nobel Prize for maths because there wasn't any reason why there should be one. There's no Nobel Prize for PE. There's the Fields Medal, though. Can I say the way you share this information with us? I love hearing you just giving us facts. There's a kind of erotic charge in the room. <laughs> I never thought it'd be you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Name some common Egyptian characters. The Eye of Horus. Yeah, I mean, like, if... Victoria's set up to fail on this, clearly. Uh, it's a high Twisted high flax. This were only used for special occasions. Ah. So they weren't common. Frankly, yes. Victoria, they've set you up there. Yes. Right. <laughs> they absolutely <laughs> did. You have them on Early Connect. Do not hire admit to use them. Of course. Do. Yes. In our first series, it was uh, Greek letters. Right. And people wrote in and said, um, we like the show, but we find that pretentious. We've listened. It's your BBC. You've reached out. We've heard you. Please choose your Egyptian hieroglyph. <laughs> <laughs> 
But it, again, they're like the only connection you have around, don't you, with no vowels. Yeah. There are no vowels in ancient uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs, and we have no idea how it would have sounded. Because when it comes to diction, vowels for volume, right. consonants for clarity. As in the exercise that is performed by actors, you repeat the following. Hip bath, hip bath, lavatory, lavatory, bidet, bidet, douche. <laughs> Things you're advertising. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like the way you looked at me when you said do. <laughs> now, what would happen if you dropped a penny from the Empire State Building? It wouldn't kill anybody. Mythbusters. It wouldn't. Nothing. It wouldn't kill someone if yeah. it hit It's too light, absolutely. Too light. Ah, yeah. it kills. It's like you could drop a duckling and it would float. A the air is like its terminal velocity is but quite. Can fall out of nests and float. Quite. Uh, oh, you know how I know this? Yes. The cars quite had low. A, a roof terrace had a pond on it, and they all threw themselves off the roof, oh, oh. which was three stories up, and they were all wandering about in the car park. <laughs> <laughs> air resistance. But if you had a grow whole bag of them, well, it's different. <laughs> you throw you throw a roll of really pennies. <laughs> Off the Empire State Building, you're you're we'll killing a, a pedestrian. Drill a hole in your head. Yeah, that is not a not a Bad good news. thing. No, no, no. They, I've I've seen the YouTube video where they tested the pen theory too. Finally, a quick health check. Put your hand up if you haven't got hemorrhoids at the moment. Put my hand up where? <laughs> <laughs> they knew Jimmy was here. They set up Victoria. They set up Jimmy. For about 25 years. Really? But doesn't. Everybody's does, got them. We're born yeah. with hemorrhoids. There isn't anybody who doesn't have them. It's only when they pre lapse or prolapse or whatever. It's only when they become enlarged or inflamed that they cause problems. There is another old wives' tale about reading on the loo uh, can cause them. Uh, that may be true. What do you have to read, though? Is it oh. like a spell? <laughs> 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 no, it's sitting or standing for too long. It strains your rectum. And, they, and also, never resist the cool to stool. <laughs> Is that a Scottish proverb? Up for an actor. They think Napoleon may have lost the Battle of Waterloo because he had a terrible attack of piles which made him uh, not sleep. Grumpy. Well, and they captured That's the moment, didn't yeah. they? <laughs> Your horse is ready. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and in first place, uh, with minus one point, it's Giles! Oh. No positives this episode. <laughs> in the 1950s, the American philosophy professor Sidney Morgan Besser went to a lecture by the English linguistics expert J. L. Austin, who claimed that while some languages use double negatives to make a positive, no language uses a double positive to make a negative. And from the back of the room came Morgan yeah, Besser's right. distinctive New York drawl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I think every town, I'm going to go on off a bit, bit of a tangent here, but this is what occurred to me when I read the name of this title. Every town of a certain size or larger has famous local acts, cover bands, the famous cover bands of that town, the ones that often end up playing the local bars and stuff. I don't know why, but it feels like that, you know, there's a handful of acts that everybody's heard of, even if you've never seen them, because you've seen the, the posters all over and that sort of thing. Well, maybe the most famous cover musician in Vancouver is a guy named Nearly Neil, who is a Neil Diamond impersonator. And he's, he's well known enough that People often refer to me as Nearly Neil on set, back when I worked in film and TV. And you, everyone knows who you're talking about, and it, it, it kind of became an unofficial nickname of my own. Not, not a frequent one, but, but I would respond to it, and I, I got the in-joke, and, you know. So I, I, I see a title that's Nearly No, and my, my first thought is Nearly Neil, and then Neil Diamond, and cover, you know, like impersonators and all the rest of it um which is completely irrelevant that that's just where my head goes sometimes 
awesome, awesome panel for this episode. I mean, you, you all know I'm a huge Victoria, Vic Corin Mitchell fan. Jimmy Carr's great. Giles episodes were always a hoot. This one was really tame on the Giles front. We we only got a couple of odd stories, and none of them were of the the ilk of that's my uncle's best friend, um, or you know my 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 great aunt slept with Napoleon's nephew kind of story. Um, this was more about him getting old and selling stairway assisting chairs and and uh speaking at funeral director conventions you know pretty pretty mainstream stuff all things considered for for Giles but yeah just i honestly don't think i've ever watched an episode of QI where at the end i'm like that was pointless that wasn't funny that one really fell flat now, of course, I haven't asked you guys to recommend that kind of episode to me. You've been at, you've been recommending I watch the good ones. So maybe there are some bad ones that you are steering me away from that you're never going to recommend. So here, I'm, I'm, I'm just deciding to do this on the spur of the moment. This may be a complete disaster of an idea, but I want you to recommend to me the worst episode of QI you've ever seen. Is there one that you remember that was like, oh, that... That just didn't work. It wasn't funny. I can't, you know, they, they brought on a big name and, and they ended up really underperforming. Something like that. Um, or for whatever reason. Just, you know, the, the worst episode of QI you've ever seen. Uh, let me know. And, and we'll do, we'll react to that one too. Because I want to know the range. I've, I've, I've seen the stellar episodes. I've seen a ton in that big fat middle of really really good that it seems almost every episode is so how low how low can they go how bad can they be um i'm, I'm kind of curious right now yeah let me know um i want this to be a discussion i think like, are there notorious episodes of qi or are there just ones that you forget about much more readily than the ones with those iconic moments um hmm and will there be a ton of dissenting opinion? Will it just be on, oh, I really hate that guest, so I hate hated that episode, you know? Or, you know, there's there's probably some really divisive guests, you know? Like, I'm thinking, like, I know a lot of people have strong feelings on people like Russell Brand, for instance. You know, so maybe there's some people that really hate his appearances. Or I, I can't think of who else might be, you know, that outspoken and, and rub that many people the wrong way. But, I'm, I'm yeah. I'm just super curious. What do you think is the worst episode of QI ever? And whatever one gets uh, the most uh, most comments, I'll uh, I'll add that one to the list too. That should be interesting. That should be really interesting. Yo, I'm excited now. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Ah, huh, cool. In in any case, um, great episode. Yes, it's early on, but but Sandy's already right right where she needs to be as an excellent host. I guess this is a, this is her first episode with Giles, but they've already got a rapport, so they must have known each other from years on the the talk show circuit. I know I know Sandy did plenty of things before she got this gig. Heck, they may even have done episodes where they were both guests back when Steven was still hosting. I I I can't imagine like Vic, Victoria Corn Mitchell and David Mitchell blow my mind because I've never been I've, I've 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 fanboyed over all sorts of people over the years but I can never remember where I was equally fond of both halves of a couple you know but I think I've seen her I've seen the wine drinking clip in 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 something short somewhere so here's where it's from I love that put it all in context right in any case Great episode. Thank you guys for recommending it. I can't wait to read the comments about what you think the worst episode of QI ever is. And until next time, everybody, take care, stay healthy. We'll see you soon. Cheers.